a $50 discount when they use the promo code PHLY. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHLY for details. Uh, it was great catching up with Preston Mattingly there. And now we welcome into the show uh, Travis Herger, who is the minor league pitching coordinator. Is that the correct title? That's, that's, right. That right. that's right. Now, you obviously a uh, pretty integral role in the organization because there's some, some big talent arms uh, in the minor league system. Obviously, Andrew Painter is, is shut down for the year. We all know how special he is. Uh, but this is a big year for Mick Abel, the big year for Griff McGarry. Um, making that kind of switch into minor league camp, I guess you get more day-to-day control and working with the guys. Um, what's that like for you with these guys and helping them? You know, they're on the doorstep of the major leagues. Um, what are you working on? What are you focusing on with them? How's it going? Yeah, I think it's a pretty seamless transition from big league camp down to minor league camp. And a lot of that's with, you know, Caleb Cotham, our big league pitching coach, Brian Kaplan, our director of pitching. Really just it's a seamless transition because we know exactly what they need to do. Um, you're just doing it with a few different people. That's sure. all. But, you know, their growth and development is really big, not only just for our future, but um, just the impact right now for them as well. So um, Mick specifically, it's just more building up. Um, and I know he had a little bit of a setback with some sickness in big league camp, but uh, he's developed a, a two seam over the end of last season. We want to continue that sort of a, a good attack plan against right handed hitters and set up his other really good stuff, his developing changeup, his elite curveball. Um, and then we switched back to more of the, the gyro, harder slider uh, at the end of last season. Um, you know, we had more of this sweeper slider back in 22 that he picked up, but I uh, always felt like that turned the curveball into a really, really good pitch. So um, didn't quite have the effect maybe that we wanted to from a profile standpoint, but he had the old one when he first uh, was drafted by us. And that's what we're going to roll with now. All right. Well, I would love to pick your brain and just kind of roll through what you guys have been working on, kind of going through uh, player by player almost, giving us the what you can share, the updated yeah. uh, almost report on what types of areas you guys are trying to tweak and fine tune. Uh, you touched on Mick, but yep. starting there, we can roll through and you can just bring your mic. Oh, up so sorry. You can, no, you're good. <laughs> um, but that way you can just get an idea of even what you guys have been seeing on your end in the development and progression for each guy. Uh, I mean, we're always going to prioritize health. That's that's number one, sure especially this time of year. Um, you know, I think we did a really nice job as a department, um, in the off season of making sure guys were taking care of their bodies. Uh, we, we talk about integration a lot inside of our organization and that comes with strength and conditioning, uh, the trainers, um, our nutritionists, uh, mental performance as well. So, and we want to make sure that these guys are staying on top of what they need to stay on top of in the months of October through January. And um, I thought we did a really nice job with that because guys came into camp healthy. They came in a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And right now it's just more about building them up, making sure their arsenals are in place and ultimately get them ready for competition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a lot of backfield games going on right now. And a lot of things can happen on those backfields that it's pretty crazy what you see. We try not to get too caught up in the result of that, but more we get more ingrained in the process and what they're doing and what their attack plans are and how they're going about deploying that. Yeah, so Travis, uh, one of the, the great stories last year was Orion Kirkery. Yeah. I mean, an ascension from low A to the major leagues to an NLCS. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to work with him firsthand. Have you seen that rise before in your career with other guys? Because that's kind of unprecedented. Uh, and obviously Orion is being leaned on now as a big part of the big league club. Uh, what have you seen from him that just kind of like, aside from the sweeper, uh, <laughs> what has just like wowed you about this kid? Yeah, I've Orion's work ethic is off the charts. And when we first drafted him, uh, he didn't quite have the big velo uh, that he had, but he, he was sort of inconsistent in what his role was in college. He, he jumped from starting to closing to, hey, two days off, you're going to pitch again. So for us, it was just developing good routines. We knew, hey, you're going to be a reliever. Um, but we wanted to get him off to a good start. So he worked hard in our off-season camps, our, our high-performance camps that we had. Um, our strength conditioning staff did a tremendous job with him. Um, but I think the big thing that, with Orion and what I think you'll see more in the industry now is you'll see guys climb a lot faster. Mm -hmm. I think with the limited roster sizes that are happening in minor leagues, uh, the way the draft is shortened as well, you're going to see certain guys get picked that they target as, Hey, these guys could be quick impacts into the big leagues. Instead of being in the minor leagues for five to six years, you're going to see guys get accelerated like what we did with Orion. But uh, that also falls on him a little bit too, and his work ethic and what he needs to do. But, um, yeah, at, at times it was sort of laughable down here in, in, in the Florida State League. And I would get texts from colleagues like, why, why, why is he even here? And I just said, well, hey, he's from Florida. We wanted the warmer weather. We, we wanted to heat up a little bit up north before we sent him north. But he did a great job of just really establishing good routines. 
Um, and that was one thing that came down not only from, you know, just the minor league side, but also from the big league side. They targeted him last spring training as a possible guy. So we wanted to make sure from a health and, and just a, a physical standpoint that he was in the right spot to be able to, to compete and, uh, so you and just get guys out. That, that parked my interest there. <laughs> yeah. The weather. Uh-huh. I never really considered that as a determining factor for where a guy yeah. starts, plays. How much does that come into play? Well, from a guy that was born and raised and still lives in Iowa, it's a major <laughs> factor because in a couple of weeks when we break camp, I'll have to bust out sweatshirts oh, and winter yeah. coats probably again. I hope not. Uh, but it, it's a factor. And I don't mean to prototype here, but our, some of our Latin American arms sure. that have never been north of Florida, mm. that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and for and for American guys, too. Sure. So uh, it's something that plays a factor into what we think a little bit. Um, if a guy is maybe delayed coming out of camp, hey, we don't want to shoot him too far north. Christian McGowan's one of those right now that uh, he pitched late into the year, late into the fall league. Um, you know, we don't want to throw him into cold weather quite yet. Sure. And hopefully it'll be nice and bombing. I think has has been up in the Philly area, yeah, but uh, we, we can't predict that, obviously. Yeah. So that's a way for us to sort of keep guys going. Nice weather. Uh, you don't get interrupted with routines with rain or snow, whatever it may yeah. be. That, that is very interesting because I do know the adjustment of, you know, going into the weather is, when it's colder, it's rainy or whatever it may be is, is different. But before we talk about weather a little bit more, because now I'm curious too, <laughs> going back to Orion, mm-hmm. that ascension last year, you know, behind the scenes, I am so curious to know what were you guys talking about with him that just continue to help him be ready to take that next step? I mean, it's such a quick progression. Mm-hmm. And as you mentioned, it's something we're going to start to see more of, but for the outs from the outside looking in, everyone's just in awe from the inside. Mm-hmm. What was the conversation you were having with him that continued to hone in? He's got the work ethic, he's got the skills, but now giving him the, the confidence and yep. also the mentality to be able to take that next step. And even this year, a bigger step that he should be taking that you guys have been having that conversation. What have you been talking about with him in that time? Yeah, outside of just establishing that role, it was just more, uh, we, we talk about strengths all the time. What are your strengths? And we, we want to make sure guys know that, but then we want to attack with your strengths too. Obviously he's got a big fastball. Um, I still remember um, Preston was on before me, but in his first bullpen in January, last January in HP camp, I mean, he was 96, 97. And we kind of looked at each other like, that's not normal. Um, and so we had to, hey, let's let's back it down a little bit. But really, it was just about attacking with your strengths. Uh, and his big strength is the sweeper. And what's super unique about him is how much it moves, but how hard he throws it. But his ability to command it, it's really, really special, whether it's a right-handed hitter or a left-handed hitter. So we really just wanted to get him off to a good start and just attack about a third of the way through the year while he was at Jersey shore, we, we wanted to kind of lean into a little bit of a a sinker two seam and uh, something against right-handed hitters, because as he goes up, the hitters get a little bit better, obviously in the big leagues, they're elite of the elite. So this was a pitch that we felt would more be a big league type pitch that he could work on now. uh, That would be something he could attack righties with and open up the sweeper later on. All right, I do have back to the weather side because now I'm curious. <laughs> I'm interested to know. I'm sure there's been various responses, but if there's one that jumps out of you at you that a player had when you do get up to the, the colder weather mm-hmm. and you're no longer in these beautiful, warm Florida uh, heat, you know, do you have a specific interaction you remember when you were a guy was just kind of thrown off and dealing with long sleeves, mm-hmm. gloves, jackets, whatever it may be? Is there one that jumps out that you can share? Yeah. Um... Uh, we just kind of combated a little bit. There was there was one. Uh, it was actually an American guy, and he was just complaining about the cold the whole time. And I'm like, "Hey, man, when do we play playoffs? We play in October. Yeah, like, we, we want cold weather in October." And he's like, "Yeah, okay." So you know, it's just a, kind of a funny way to combat that a little bit. Like you're, you're never you're never going to win out on that one, but it's just something they have to adapt to. Yeah, have you seen Citizens Bank Park in October? <laughs> it's uh, it's wonderful. It's the best Very weather cool. in the world. Uh, so back to uh, Orion Sweeper because Tyler and I are producer. He's a this definition of baseball nerd. Right love here. it, love it. We were talking about the evolution of the sweeper, mm-hmm. and you've probably seen it now get implemented more. Um, Orion, it's nasty. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you see that thing, mm-hmm. where did the sweeper kind of come from? What did it evolve from? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, its place in the game now? Absolutely about. It was about eight, nine years ago. We were all we kind of understood, you know, ball flight and you know different spin metrics. Uh, the way we we're able to track it on TrackMan or Rapsodo at the time. Now you have TrackMan Mobile, and uh, now you have Hawkeye, and which is out of all of our affiliates, including uh, our big league ballpark, and that's the MLB Statcast data. Um, but we we're all chasing like the bullet gyro slider, sure. right? Um, and then as we came to know a little bit more about seam effects and seam orientation and how 
the ball flight sort of changes based off of how the, the seams are oriented. Uh, the, the secret behind it, like our, our big league pitching coach, Jonathan, probably the godfather behind this when he was at Cincinnati, like he saw guys like uh, Castillo and Sonny Gray were throwing these big, like sweeping sliders and everyone went, what's that? And so uh, the industry sort of picked up on it, gained momentum and it gained steam. And now you see all these guys, they throw sweepers. Uh, but even like the hard gyro is also coming back as a sort of a way to like, you know, combat that or protect the sweeper as well. So um, that that's where it all kind of started a little bit. It was probably around that COVID year 2020. I remember being on numerous Zoom calls um, with uh, a guy out in Utah uh, that was sort of proclaiming all this seam, you know, seam shifted wake and all these things. And it was kind of eye popping a little bit. And the more you dove into it, it wasn't as complex maybe as people thought of it. It's just more, hey, where where are you holding this and how, how are you spinning it out of your hand? Hmm. So I'd love to be a fly on the wall in these conversations because now I'm curious as you're talking about minor tweaks that can implement something like a sweeper. Right. You know, what do you guys as a staff really talk about of ways to without making it overcomplicated, yeah. but make those minor tweaks that you have been studying and getting data from that you feel like can help evolve a player's pitch? Uh, that's a great question. And the one thing we have to combat too is sort of, uh, outside factors, maybe private industry, those types of things where guys can go to YouTube now and they can, you know, there are 20 ways to throw a sweeper and it's mm -hmm. 20 different ways. And uh, we have to make it super simple for these guys. But uh, the thing I will say is we, we have a ton of robust information that is given to us that we can, you know, simplify to a player. Uh, but at the end of the day, and the game hasn't changed. It's about, you know, throwing strikes and getting guys out. Sure. We just have different ways now where we can accelerate that development. So to your point, it mm -hmm. could be a simple tweak that maybe before we didn't know that now we can give the why behind it have a simplified answer and hopefully you see a lot more guys that can you know rise throughout the levels a lot faster and make an impact with our big league club yeah uh last one for you and then we'll, we'll let you go yeah. we appreciate the time it's, uh, i could talk to you all day i know i love this uh, <laughs> i got till noon yeah. Fish, so. <laughs> yeah you guys take the field to our left here in a little bit yeah. um the evolution of the six starter long bullpen mm -hmm. arm michael mercado guy you got from the Rays in december yeah looks like he's kind of in position to be that first arm up maybe mm -hmm. uh you know that six starter type how important is that long reliever six starter like how much more important has that become in the last five years uh i think in multiple ways uh it's been valuable you look at it in 22 with a guy like bailey falter to be able to come sure. up and make and pitch some impact innings and give wheeler a break so he could set up for you know a longer run. You can give Nolan extra days rest, and uh, those guys were at their best going into the playoffs when we made that run. So it's something we talk about in all minor leagues a lot, whether it's uh, a starter or a bolt guy, uh, being able to build that up uh, to where, again, they're still working on things they need to work on, but they can go up and make that impact. And whether it's two weeks, three weeks, hey, they can go in and fill some innings and, and give those guys maybe an extra day, keep them in the race, continue to win ball games. That's really valuable for us. Um, and so, again, I think it's it's important now, especially you have more off days inside of a schedule, you can manipulate that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but again, if we're going to make deep runs every year in the playoffs, we have to make that impact in the minor leagues in those type of spots. And um, you look at it last year, you had a guy like Lorenzo at the trade deadline. Right. That was huge for us because we could give extra days rest. Guys were, you know, look, a guy like Ranger, he's a little Long dinged season. up and yeah. he gets in the playoffs and he's right where he needs to be. So mm -hmm. that, that's important to us. We sort of know our role when it comes to that, whether that's even from a value standpoint as well, when we can, you know, show from a trade standpoint, hey, this guy, you know, can throw bulk innings or, you know, is a starter. You know, we may get more bang for our buck if we need an impact guy and Dave and Sam need to go make a trade, and now we have more value uh, as far as the trade goes. For you, in terms of getting those guys ready, is it, a, is it a, its own animal in terms of true bullpen versus true starter? Is it its own unique kind of development and, I guess, building up? Yeah, and like I always say, the like guys in the minor leagues have to pitch. And yeah. so even what, going back to Orion, like there was some times where we had to pitch him two innings rather outside of just his one inning. And that was really just to get him volume and get him exposed to doing that. Um, they just have to pitch. And they, we have to cover innings. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we have a lot of guys that maybe we want to, you know, we restrict a little bit when it comes to back to backs or, hey, we, it's unique in the minor leagues too because we play st six straight days and then we have a, a universal off day. So you can't do the traditional four day turn like they do in the big leagues all the time. So we, we have to be sort of unique in how we do that. Uh, we can't run it just like the big leagues, but at the end of the day, we want to be able to physically prepare our guys to be ready to go and make mm -hmm. an impact. Sure. Well, Travis Herger, the minor league uh, 
pitching coordinator for the Philadelphia Phillies. Fascinating conversation. Yeah. We probably could have gone Loved for an it. hour with you. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much for Thanks taking for having the time me. out. Thank Absolutely. You. And best of luck this year. Hopefully right. everybody stays healthy. All right, go Phils. Yeah, yes. go Phils. Right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That was Travis Herger. That was a uh, fascinating uh, pitching conversation there. Uh, and let's take some more, uh, take care of some more business here, Renee, uh, before we welcome in Sam Aldegheri, uh, who was born quite a story in Verona, I Italy. I love his story. But, uh, uh, we'll take care of some business first, and uh, I'll tell you about the Game Time app because Game Time oh, is the nice fastest growing. Welcome. What's up, Sam? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> um, the fastest growing ticket app in nice the country. And if you use code PHLY, you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Maybe you're even coming what? down here to the Bay Care Complex to catch a game. You can grab some tickets. I've used it several times myself now, uh, and it's a great app. You can get seat views uh, before you buy the tickets. You can get flash deals and last minute tickets. Uh, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Game time has your back, people. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. And tickets make a great holiday gift. So snap into action and get tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHLY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, just create an account, code PHLY for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, let me tell you guys about FOCO, where you can buy the greatest merchandise. They've got bobbleheads, hats, T-shirts. If you want to rock some great Phillies gear like Sam is here, you can do so over at FOCO. They have you covered. You can use code PHLY to be able to get a nice discount, 10% off of your purchase, and also be able to save now as you're gearing up for the start of the new season to be able to rock the best overalls, T-shirts, hats, slippers, sandals, you name it. They've got it over at FOCO. Again, that code is P-H-L-Y. So joining us now, a uh, very fascinating story, Sam. Uh, Sam Aldegheri, am I pronouncing that correct? Yeah. All right, nailed it. Because I am a uh, captain of mispronunciation. Butcher's name. Yeah, I butcher name. So I'm, I'm glad I got that <laughs> You say right. correctly. All right, good. Uh, Sam was born in Verona, Italy. Uh, was part of the World Baseball Classic last year on Team Italy, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh, no, I was not part of it. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, misspoke there. That was a bad notes by me. Uh, but you come over from Verona, Italy. You're in the Philly system now. How, tell us a little bit about growing up playing baseball in Italy. Um, do your friends make fun of you for not playing soccer? Like, how does that go? Is, it, is there teams everywhere? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, no, they never make fun of me, actually. <laughs> um, no, I grew up uh, in a school where I have a lot of uh, friends that were playing baseball with me. Okay. So I grew up with them. Uh, I started playing uh, because of my brother. He started playing before me, so I just follow him, and I fell in love with baseball. Yeah, and I know we had a chance to do a, a little bit of a deep dive. Uh, we've been doing down on the farm on our show where we kind of go player by player, and we were talking about you, and your story is incredible. You know, the way that you've been wanting to also bring and highlight baseball in Italy and showcase it as a sport that, you know, you want more players around Italy to be able to play. You know, what was that like for you, following in your brother's footsteps, having a chance to come play, in the, you know, with the Phillies, uh, but just being able to – hone in on even is there pressure with that is there excitement of being able to help trailblaze in a way for italy and baseball in italy i'm real um i'm really blessed to be here in this organization of course i'm excited uh i want to of course i want to uh grow the baseball grow more in italy because now is it's a ride but it can be better mm -hmm. you know uh, so yeah i have a big weight on my shoulder but, yeah it's exciting that's cool. So personally for you, your goals this spring, what are you working on trying to improve that? What's a, what's a big focus for you here during spring training? Uh, I'm trying to work a little bit more on my arsenal, uh, especially on my changeup. Uh, but I think the stuff now, we're in March, I think the stuff is, is good. Uh, hopefully it's going to be better by the start of the season. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, and how has, been, how has spring training been going for you? Obviously you guys are now in the routine, you're in the shuffle, games going on today. Um, you know, how have things been going on your end of just this year specifically, how you're feeling with the team, with the guys, and with the development that you've been making? Uh, I love these guys. I love this organization. Uh, I love to be here every day. It's uh, really exciting. Uh, I don't really take it as a job. I think, like, it's more it's more funny than, than a job, you know? Um, I'm really excited for this season. Uh, we're doing a really good job. Um, the staff is really great. I love the guys. So, yeah, I love to spend time here. So uh, working with guys that, you know, Andrew Painter's obviously recovering from surgery now, but when you see like a Mick Abel and an Andrew Painter, are you picking their brain, trying to learn from them, develop from them, mimic some things? Because these are some supremely talented guys you've been coming up with. Uh, 
how does that work for you in the pitching uh, in the minor league system? Are you guys all helping each other, picking each other's brains constantly? How does that go? Actually, I watched Mika throwing bullpen this morning. Uh, he's a really good guy. Andrew Painter, too, is a really good guy. They always hang out with us. Uh, they're really chilling. I like them. They're a really good person. Awesome. Uh, yeah. All right. So I want people to get a chance to know you a little bit off the baseball field as well. Any great hobbies, talents? Are you a good chef? Maybe something specific? Wine making? I don't know. I don't know. Like, is there something that people don't know about Sam Altagari outside of who you are as a baseball player? I love to cook. Uh, I cook every night. Actually, I cook uh, for sometimes for my roommates too. Some pasta, some carbonara. Oh, I was uh, gonna ask. Carbonara is my favorite. Yeah, I play a lot of video games, but yeah, I love to cook actually. <laughs> So who actually are your roommates? I'm always fascinated yeah. by the minor league guys and who they team up with. And what are you doing at the house? Are you video games? Are you fishing? Like, what's what's the downtime for you guys? It depends which person I have their hobbies. Uh, I'm living with the Wesley Moore and George Klassen, uh, okay. two really good guys. Sure. I love to hang out with them. Uh, I hang out uh, with Andrew Walling and Trista Garnett, too. Oh, they're great guys. Um, we just play video games. We just talk about baseball. We always watch games, um, Philly stuff, everything. So what's about the big baseball. video game? Uh, I play a lot of the show and FIFA. Yeah, FIFA. Yeah. Oh, who's your go-to FIFA team? Uh, I'm a Juventus fan. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a former soccer player myself. We can have a whole other conversation right now. Um, all right, FIFA. We got it. I love that. I love that. So, video games, cooking. What is it that you're not good at? Baseball, video games, cooking. There's there's talent there. Although I don't know if you're winning in FIFA, you're just playing. But what are you not? I think I'm, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. What is it that you're not as good at that maybe uh, you want to get better at? Is it something that the guys, you guys try golfing or some sort of challenges you guys try that you're? I tried to play golf, but I'm not. I'm not good at all. I'm not good at all. Golf is the hardest thing in the world. A lot of people say hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do, but I think golf is the hardest thing in the world. Uh, Sam, here's a little outside the box question from you. For you, if you could steal one of your teammates, whether in the majors or minor leagues, one thing they did, if you could take one pitch, and maybe it's Orion Sweeper or Andrew Painter's control. You know, a lot of people say you have some of the best control in the minor leagues. What's the one like thing you would steal from a teammate that you would apply to your game? That's a really good question. Uh, I would probably go with a slider from slider slash curveball from Aaron Nola uh, or yeah. Zach Wheeler. Okay, yeah. okay. And then what is something you have been working on in your progression? I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but you know, what's something that this spring training you really want to hone in on and get better at? Uh, I'm trying to work a lot on the changeup. Uh, I think uh, slider and corbos are, are pretty good now, but the changeup, I need to improve it. That's awesome. Sam, well, we can't thank you enough for stopping yes. by and talking with us and hanging out a little bit. Uh, we'll be following you along this year. Is there an expectation of where you're going to be starting the year yet? I know there's a little bit of low A, high A. Are you possibly, do you know yet, or is that still on the I have no idea. I'll go wherever they tell me yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're living the dream, man. <laughs> so it's an awesome story. We'll be following along. Wish you health and best of luck this year. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. For Thank by, you. Sam. Appreciate good it. Luck FIFA, Want some man. carbonara <laughs> now. Yeah. Juventus, so Juventus fan. Um, that was Thanks, a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, and let's bring in our own John Foley here as we close out the show. Uh, yes. John's been here on the grind uh, down at the complex. Such a beautiful complex, man. Sitting here in between the Carpenter Complex, oh my where goodness. some minor league games are about to happen, <laughs> the big league club, and I just heard the bell at Frenchie's ring. I heard it. So I'm getting quite thirsty hearing that. That's like the Hold uh, on, real quick. After all those guests, this guy closes the show. <laughs> this is what we're wrapping <laughs> up with. He's got the full special on his arm, man. We had to get him in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, John, what's up, man? It was great to catch up with you at dinner last night. We hit Frenchie's uh, in Rockaway Beach. Um, game today, we get Ranger Suarez on the mound. Uh, what's been going on, man? What's the latest this week? How is it? How's it been? So, uh, yeah, I've been down here a while now. Uh, <laughs> so looking forward to getting back to the family, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you can see this beautiful, this is what more baseball you have spring. It's, it's baseball it's heaven. That's exactly what it is. I'm sitting here and watching you guys film Shane Vicarino's walking by in the background, <laughs> casually sipping on a smoothie. I mean, <laughs> this is all, this is surreal to me. Um, I love that. I love that. John, uh, finally we get to see you in person. You know, there's, we're always virtually chatting with you joining the show. Yeah, as you've been working through, and now you're you're a spring training veteran, basically. You've basically, been here long yeah. enough. Yeah, you've been. I mean, this is all no big deal to me. <laughs> so today, uh, you know, I know you've, you've been working and grinding on your end. What are some things you've been working on that people can look forward to coming up? Uh, so we're going to have a, a comprehensive 
uh, review of Clearwater, uh, the restaurants, the, the sights Love and it. sounds, the beach, and uh, of course the ballpark. We'll have that up. Uh, not sure if it's going to be uh, for for diehard content or or what, but uh, uh, something to look forward to. Um, and then you know, just the standard as the stories unfold, we'll have anything you need if it's related to the Phillies. We're going to have you covered. Yeah, obviously Saturday's a, uh, a big event in minor league baseball. Um, I think you're going to be making the trek over to the Tiger Stadium. Uh, what are you looking forward to in that game? Who are you going to be focused on? Is it Mick Abel? Is it Starlin Caba? Is uh, it Crawford? What, what are you going to ha- have your uh, binoculars on? Now? Well, you know, we did so much uh, work related to the prospects during the offseason sure. that I really, I really feel emotionally invested now <laughs> in basically every single one of these guys. Uh, so I'm excited to see how they all do. Um, but yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to top Nick Abel. I think the excitement around him, the buzz is starting to build, uh, in a way. I mean, it was only a couple innings here in the spring. We don't want to overreact. But it's been perfect. Yeah. It's been a perfect perfect couple innings. So if these trends continue, uh, we should be in good shape. Yeah. Now, yesterday we saw Brandon Marsh make his return. Um, of course, Kyle Schwarber's back in the lineup today. What are you looking forward to today, uh, in this game? Because every game there's something different, I feel like. Someone that's standing out, someone I'm with second in the batting order. You know, is there anything specific you're looking forward to in this I'd, one? I'd really, I think we're overdue for a swore bomb. I'm not going to make any any prediction on that, but it just feels it feels like a swore bomb kind of day. He hasn't done it yet. You know, he's been he's been doing the other thing, the, you know, the one for 20, <laughs> for 25. But he's going to start the doing. season slow. That's just what he does. Yeah, that's and, what he does. You know, I, I, I've been telling this people, we have to prepare ourselves. Kyle <laughs> Schwarber starts baseball season slow. Yeah. And then come, uh, you know, May, yeah, he's May probably going to hit 18 home runs. Yes. It's going to be pretty yes. cool. He'll do, he'll do his thing. So everybody <laughs> else just needs to hold down the fort for a little bit. There's a lot of yeah. other talented hitters on that team. You know, uh, they need to pick each other up. They're all going to go through their slumps. And they just need to they just need to not have them at the same time. And especially not during uh, – during the postseason, but we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> knock on all the wood here. We're gonna get all that bad juju out. Um, but yeah, it is it is great to see as we as have. Alec Bohm signed some jerseys behind us. I was gonna yeah, say, like, I'll just slide out the way if you guys can see <laughs> Alex so there. This. Yeah, this. I mean, this is great. This is what we love to be able to have. You're hearing the sound of the bats. You're hearing the the spikes on the. I love the spikes, spikes on the, the concrete, crunch. which we love. Amazing. I love that crunch. Oh, it's amazing. I love the crunch. And then just even just the vibes and the excitement, guys. This is what it's. This is what it's all about. And I'm so happy that you've been able to be down here. Now I'm, I was saying to them, like, okay, you know what, John is doing something right because I sh- I'd love to be down here for six weeks. Yeah, yeah. We went to the Frenchies <laughs> last night. That was maybe my fourth trip. I have all the I have all the collectors cups to show it. <laughs> Shout out to the rum runner. <laughs> yeah, the yes. rum runner is so, uh, amazing. Rum runner is very today. good. Yeah. yeah, and then we closed the night out at uh, Hulk Hogan's spot. <laughs> it was sure did. Had to get a nightcap, brother. <laughs> uh, but that's gonna that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for us yeah. here. We got a baseball game starting in a little bit. Uh, big thanks to Preston Mattingly, uh, Travis Herger, and Sam Aldegary, and of course John Brazier from the Phillies for making all this magic happen. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, same place, same location, empty oh, ballpark because yeah. tomorrow is a night game, 6.05 game. Uh, Correct. And then Saturday is the big spring breakout game. Sunday, St. Patty's Day at Baycare Complex. I think it's going to be a little bit of a party here on Sunday. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm hearing some things. It might be a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't we'll, wait. We will be back tomorrow. we got a baseball game to attend. Uh, John's got some writing to do up in the press box. Uh, but we appreciate everybody. Uh, hit that like, thumbs up button before you get out of here. Uh, we appreciate everyone for tuning in, watching the show. Uh, it'll be up in podcast form in a little bit. Uh, great discussions today with some minor league, uh, uh, you know, Preston Mattingly, Sam Fold, and Dave Dombrowski have really kind of turned the tides here in the minor league system. And, and, you know, he was humble and didn't want to take credit for it. But the reality is it's improved a lot <laughs> yeah. under their steward. Um, so thank you to everybody for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, thanks to the Phillies for having us. We love it here. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, adios. Hi. We all city like the mayor. 